So long, Captain. Well, well, welcome back to New York Sports Wicker Media. I'm Watt2K99. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to watch these videos. So, the news broke a little bit earlier today that Knicks legend, Hall of Famer, Willis Reed, one of the greatest players in NBA history, passed today due to congestive heart failure. He was 80 years old. And I wanted to come on here and uh, give a little tribute uh, to a man I, I never got to see play. Uh, I was born in the early 80s, but... He truly is one of the absolute cornerstones in the history of one of the most storied franchises in NBA history. So I wanted to do this in a little bit of a, a different way. We're going to talk about his history, but I want to use this book. And uh, this book is called Crazy About the Knicks. Marv Albert wrote it after the Knicks won their first title in 1970. This book has literally been around for, 50, <laughs> for 53 years to the point where the cover is completely torn. Um, I still have the cover, but it's at, literally torn in half and it doesn't wrap around the book. Um, yeah, my dad had this, my grandfather had this. They actually brought a hardcover version of this for $6.95, if you can believe that, uh, way back in the day. So Marv wrote a tribute about each one of the players, and I want to read a little bit from what he said about Willis Reed, describing his style of play. He is like a big bull when he enters the half ring underneath the backboards. He assembles his massive 240 pound body behind two broad shoulders and charges back and forth. He even appears to snort, though this is perhaps the result of trying to breathe through a nose that has been broken five times. At the end of the 1969-1970 season, he has been guarding that little half ring for exactly 18,998 minutes in NBA games. And I can't honestly recall if I've ever seen him smile for one second on the court. He always looks as if he's seeing red. That's Willis Reed. He takes his basketball seriously. He has pride in his work. Perhaps more pride than any other basketball player I know. So for those, those of us who didn't see Willis Reed play, I wanted to give you the perspective of uh, Marv Albert. Just to show you just how fierce and tough and aggressive he was. But Reed was known as the captain well before Mark Messier, well before Derek Jeter, there was Willis Reed. He played 10 seasons in the NBA, all with the Knicks. He also served as the team's coach and general manager after his playing career ended in 1974. He was also an executive with the Nets when they uh, were still in New Jersey. And he was an executive with the New Orleans Hornets from 2004 to 07. So Reed was born uh, June 25th, 1942. Grew up in a tiny town called Hico, Louisiana. And he grew up on a farm in Bernice, Louisiana. In fact, I think Benny a Anders, uh, who was a legendary player from Phi Slamma Jamma, the famous Houston college teams of the 80s, uh, he also came from Bernice. I think they're actually cousins, uh, Benny Anders and Willis Reed. So, Reed attending Grambling University, known for their football program with Coach Eddie Robinson, but he led the Tigers to an NAIA title, three Southwestern Athletic Conference titles. Now, the Knicks were absolutely horrible in those days, in the uh, late 50s to mid 60s. And initially, they were going to, they were kind of torn if they were going to draft him or not. Uh, but they went with, I believe, Jim uh, Jim Barnes. That was the center that they went with. They were a little bit concerned about Reed's height. He was only about 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, weren't sure he was going to make it as a center. But you know what? The rest of the NBA wasn't sure about it either. Even Red Hour back in the Boston Celtics, who were very well known for their ability to take talent, they passed on him. Uh, for a guy named Mel Counts. So even Red Auerbach blew the chance to get him. The Knicks made him their first pick in the second round of the 1964 draft, uh, the eighth selection overall. So Reed was showing some signs early on, but the Knicks really wanted to move him to the power forward position. So they traded for Walt Bellamy from Detroit. So Reed, who is six foot nine, played power forward for several years as the Knicks continue to lose. But then Red Holzman comes along during the 1967-68 season, and the Knicks start to win a little bit. They went 43-39. and That was their first winning season in nine years. But then the turning point came on December 19th, 
1968, when the Knicks traded Walt Bellamy and guard Howard Colmides to the Pistons for forward Dave DeBusher. And that deal is what allowed Willis Reed to move back over to the center position where he belonged and where he owned it. Reed's quote, since that trade, I feel like a new person. Center is my position, end quote. Well, it didn't take long to prove it. You know, six days after the trade on Christmas night, he pulled down 28 rebounds against Philadelphia. His scoring average that season rose from 17 points a game to 24 points per game. His shooting percentage went up 30%. 30% it went up. But of all the things he's always going to be known for, it's Game 7, the 1970 NBA Finals against the Lakers. He had pulled a muscle in his hip during Game 5 with the series uh, deadlock 2-2. Two to two. Uh, The Knicks won Game 5. The Lakers absolutely pulverized the Knicks back in L.A. Game 6. They just couldn't contain Will Chamberlain without Willis Reed. And during warm-ups, we all know the big moment. Here comes Willis! As he comes down the uh, now-defunct Madison Square Garden center court tunnel. And it's been well said. You know, the Lakers stopped warm-ups. They stopped what they were doing. Chamberlain, Elgin Baylor, Jerry West... They were all watching Willis. They were hypnotized by him. And right there at that moment, both Bill Bradley and Walt Frazier have said, as soon as they saw that, they said to themselves, we got him. We're in their heads. We're going to win this game. And that's exactly what they did. The Knicks won 113-99. Reed made the first two shots of the game, putting the Knicks up 4-0. He never scored again. He didn't need to. Clyde Frazier had one of the greatest games of his life. And I'm just thinking to myself, can you imagine if the Lakers had falling apart like this if they blew that game with Reed Hurt? Can you imagine social media now? Can you imagine cable news? Can you imagine YouTube? Can you imagine podcasts? How those guys would have been vilified? They would have been shredded over that game. That that loss would that game would have been about the Lakers, not so much the Knicks, which uh, which really would have been a shame. But back to Reed, he won two Finals MVPs in 1970 and 73. He appeared in seven All-Star games and averaged 18.7 points per game and 12.9 rebounds per game. Won Rookie of the Year in 1965, first Nick to ever win that award. Won the MVP in 1970. Now, as we said, his career was cut short by injuries, retired in 1974, went on to briefly coach the Knicks before he coached at Creighton University from 1981 to 1985, joined the Nets in 88, first as a coach, then over to the front office. And he's also the first Nick to have his jersey number retired. Number 19 is hanging in the rafters, and number 19 will be on every Knicks jersey's patch for the rest of the season. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1982 and was named among the 50 greatest players in NBA history back in 1997. So just to sum up Willis Reed and who he is as a person, I wanted to give you a quote from him that kind of summarizes uh, how he looks at himself and how he wants to be remembered and and how he wanted to play the game, and I think it's very uh, fitting. So he was asked uh, one day in an interview if he felt the fans, if he would hear uh, what they, um, when they were cheering for him, if they were booing him, and he said no. This is a quote, no. At a game, I have to satisfy myself that I am doing my very best. That comes first. He paused for a moment and added, maybe this is what is exemplified to the fans. When I quit playing ball, I want people to look back and say not that I was great, but that I gave 100%. Well, there is no person in the world that can deny the effort of the captain of Willis Reed. So, number 19, on behalf of not just Knicks fans, but basketball fans, we thank you. We acknowledge you. Rest easy. Well, thanks everybody for watching. If you have any memories or thoughts on Willis Reed, I'd love to see them in the comments. Uh, Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you back here with more content from you know where. The Wicker Chair.